Hey everyone, we are right outside of the future home of Universal's Epic Universe, which is their newest theme park that is opening in 2025. Now there's a lot of Universal updates we are gonna talk about in this particular video, but we wanted to start off over here at the future site of Epic Universe because I haven't been out here yet. I've driven past it a few times. We're right by the Orange County Convention Center if you're familiar with the area. But yeah, just wanted to come out and see what we can see. And then I think we're gonna head over to Universal Studios to talk about some of the updates over there. So let's go. And we are right off of Universal Boulevard and right in front of us is the future home of one of the new resorts that are gonna be here at Epic Universe. Look how cool this is. You can see the construction cranes. And this is like right here. It's very interesting because the windows on this hotel don't look like windows that would normally be on the outside of a hotel. They have that oval type of shape. So I'm really curious what the theming of this is gonna be. Is it gonna be like space themed of some sorts? I don't know, but the windows are definitely an interesting shape and size. And then behind the hotel, you can see some cranes, those yellow cranes that are off in the distance. And then this entire area right over here to the left of the hotel is all going to be Epic Universe as well. There's a lot of cranes and things happening over here. But I'm just really taken aback by this hotel because I did not realize they were like this far along on some of the projects. Like this is a building that is vertical, very much vertical. I'm also trying to figure out how I'm going to get to the other side of this because I know there's ways you can get over there and get a little bit closer, but this is my first time here. so. I'm learning the lay of the land. And as we're coming into City Walk, we are coming across our first major update, and that is that the Universal Orlando Resort sign is back. This was gone for quite some time, and it's got a little bit of a facelift. They painted this a more vibrant blue, and they changed the font. I will say I like the old one better, but I am glad that there is some version of a sign that's back. And as we're making our way through City Walk and over to Universal Studios, looks like they are filming something here today. It could be anything. It could be a TV show, it could be a commercial, who knows? But there is some filming action. And that's something that not a lot of people realize when they come to Universal Studios is that this is an actual working film and TV studio. They don't use it as often as they used to, like back in the 90s, but they are still using it for a number of different productions, so you never know what you're going to see when you come here. And it really is a beautiful day out here. It really feels like a summer day. It's actually been kind of chilly in Florida for the last couple of weeks for the most part, so it is nice to feel the sun again. As we're making our way into Hollywood, the mystery machine is out, which means Scooby and the gang must not be too far away. It's like Popeye is out too. The Simpsons vehicle is out too, so they must be nearby. But we are over now by Williams of Hollywood, the dark room, and the former annual pass holder lounge. And Universal did confirm that this is gonna be the future home of the Tribute Store starting with Mardi Gras next month. There's some of the Scooby-Doo gang. There's Daphne and Shaggy. Doc Brown is out here too. This is like character palooza. There's a lot of characters over here. But our first order of business today is gonna be lunch at Cafe La Bamba. And this is finally open as a full-time or almost full-time quick service restaurant. And here's a quick look at their menu. They have burritos, tacos, and bowls. All of this looks really, really good. They have dessert and a couple of sides as well. And this is a unique restaurant because you grab a table and then you go inside and mobile order and they bring it right over to your table. So we're gonna head inside and hopefully it doesn't have too long of a wait. As we're heading inside La Bamba, there's this fountain that's directly in front of the front entrance. And something I never noticed is that all of the coins that go into this fountain are sent over to give kids the world village. That is awesome. So normally for like the VIP tours and everything, this is where you would come and get your food. It is not set up as a buffet right now. Like I said, you go over and grab a table and then you order your food and they bring it right out to your number. And then here you can see this is the usual home of the VIP experience and you have a little breakfast or lunch in here included with your tour. So we just got our table and as you can see, there's a QR code to mobile order along with a table number. And then once you place your order, they will bring it directly to your table. So I'm at table 14, and in just a few minutes, my food will be brought right here. When less than five minutes after I placed my mobile order, my food came out, and it comes with a side of chips, which I was not expecting. I got the pollo asado burrito, which is grilled chicken. 
So let's dig in. Okay, first things first, let's try the tortilla chips. They look pretty good, and they kind of have like a lime type of smell to them. The smell is very, very strong coming off of these, so let's try them. Tortilla chips are really, really good. Tastes very similar to Moe's, but they have a good amount of salt on them, and then they have like either lime juice or some sort of lime seasoning that is really, really good. So, good start, I do like the chips. I just unwrapped the burrito, and here's a quick look at what that looks like. Obviously, I haven't bitten into it yet, and I'll show you the inside in just a moment. Pretty decent size, probably a little bit smaller than what you would get at like a Moe's or a Chipotle. So I had a few bites of the burrito so far. Here's a quick look at the inside. It has pico, chicken, obviously sour cream, rice, and black beans. Pretty good so far, I do have to say. So we were finished up at Cafe La Bamba. It was honestly pretty good and a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not the biggest fan of Universal's quick service food when I come to the parks. I try to eat before if I'm coming around lunch or dinner just because, like I said, I'm really not the biggest fan of their quick service options, but that was really, really good and definitely a place that I would certainly come back to because there's other things on the menu that I wanna try. But I think that's gonna be my go-to place for like lunch or dinner if we happen to be in the parks at this time. Very, very good quite surprising and it was very easy. From the minute I placed my mobile order to the food arriving on my, on my table was about five minutes at the most. So the service was good, it was nice and quick. And like I said, it was quite delicious. So highly recommend Cafe La Bamba if you're here around lunch or dinner time. Right outside Cafe La Bamba, there is this giant stage that has been erected. I think this is for Rock the Universe which is next weekend, I believe. It's a Christian music festival that they do every year here at Universal Orlando. I'm guessing that's what this is for. I can't really imagine what else this would be for. So it looks like the media center is open for previews today. The media center is this building right here. It's right behind Cafe La Bamba and by the Central Park crepe stand. And usually they'll have you sample shows or movies or clips and then a lot of the times they will compensate you with universal gift cards. So if you see this sign and you have a little bit of time to kill, it's a good way to make a little bit of money. So the biggest change over the last week or two is that Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone is completely closed down. You can see they already put up the walls, the construction walls, and it has a whole bunch of DreamWorks characters on it. But everything back this way, with the exception of E.T., is closing. I mean, SpongeBob is staying put, and I believe the pizza company is staying put. Might be rethemed, but I think it is staying. But everything else back there, Fievel's Playground, Curious George, it's all going away. And you can see this was the old sign, the front entrance to Kid Zone. It's completely covered up with tarp now, and there's still no official word as to what's going to be coming here, but the heavy rumor is that it's going to be DreamWorks. And it makes sense because Universal doesn't have a whole lot of kids properties and DreamWorks is kind of their bread and butter right now as we see like some of the trolls on the construction walls over here so that would be my guess is this is what's going to be coming here next is going to be something to do with DreamWorks so the walkway that leads back to ET Adventure which again is staying is quite narrow now there was a lot of people coming in and it got a little bit narrow, so just a heads up. Back over this way, Puss in Boots and Kitty Softpaws are out meeting and greeting. So one of the things that I'm most curious about with that whole area that's under construction is what's gonna happen during Halloween Horror Nights, because there are two houses that go back there and you walk through Kid Zone as part of the queue. So are they gonna reroute the queue? Are there gonna be no houses back there? That I'm really curious. We have some more construction walls in front of the Simpsons ride over here. You can still ride the ride. I think the ride is still open. You're just going in a different entrance, but this is under construction as well. And it is such a beautiful day. This is one of my favorite places to just look out at Universal because you can see so much. You can see San Francisco. You can see Rip Ride Rocket off in the distance, Transformers, Springfield. It's a beautiful day. And as we're walking through San Francisco, we could already see the first two Mardi Gras food and drink booths that have popped up. Of course, they're still covered up. We're still a little bit of ways away from Mardi Gras, but they are getting ready. Another 
another Mardi Gras food booth that has popped up. We are looking at the former home of the Universal Tribute Store. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is going to be moving over to Hollywood. But I wonder what's going to be coming here in the future. Now the former home of Shrek 4D is transforming into a brand new Minions attraction opening this summer. And we have some new signage on top of the facade. It says, Welcome to VillainCon. Universal Studios Florida featuring the Vicious Six. So it looks like these are the six main villains that are going to be a part of VillainCon. And there's another look at the signage featuring that Vicious Six. Although, they don't really look that vicious. So next up, we're going to stop in the Five and Dime because this is one of the locations that you can pick up the new annual pass holder lanyard. This is also one of the locations if you want to be a part of the Tribute Store, you can get a custom prop bottle See it in the Mardi Gras Tribute Store, limited space available, and you can get your photo. I actually think that's really cool, and I think we're gonna do that this year. So here's a closer look at the pass holder lanyard. It has some bright colors on it. it says UOAP, pass holder, and it even comes with the little plastic part to put your ID and your pass in. And you can pick this up until February 3rd if you are an annual pass holder. And in case you are not super familiar, right here is Studio Styles, the former pass holder lounge, which is where you would come and pick up all of your freebies. And the five and dime is literally right across the street. And over here directly in front of the lake and next to Transformers is one of the Mardi Gras pop-up bars. And you can see all the bunting that is around it. This is one of the main bars and it is getting ready for Mardi Gras. And over here in New York, there's a couple more Mardi Gras food booths that have popped up as well. I love the theming that they do on the Mardi Gras ones, like the window shutters and the balconies as if it was actually New Orleans. Very, very cool. There's one here and then there's a purple one over here. There's a closer look at the purple one. They're almost exactly the same. I think they are the same except for just the color of the building being purple. But yeah, Mardi Gras is right around the corner. And since we're over here and the food booths are out, let's talk a little bit more about this year's Mardi Gras celebration. It's dubbed International Flavors of Carnival, which has been the name of it for the last few years now. It runs from February 4th until April 16th. So it's just about a two and a half month party and festival, which is a lot of fun because like I said, this is one of my favorite times to come to Universal. And there's a lot of cool things. There's an awesome parade. If you're an annual pass holder, you actually have the opportunity to go on the parade floats and throw the beads. And you could do that by reserving your time. Alex and I and our friends actually did that. And we're gonna be doing that in February. If you're not an annual pass holder, you can still try the day of, but they did say there's gonna be very limited availability. But in addition to the parade, of course, there's a whole bunch of food booths and drink options, which I'm excited to try. There's live concerts as well. So let's take a look at who's gonna be coming here this year. Okay, so this year's concert lineup starts on February 4th, which is the first day, and they're gonna have Patti LaBelle. On February 10th, there's a singer named Jake. Uh, February 11th is Goo Goo Dolls, that's a good one. February 18th is Marin Morris. February 19th is Willow. February 25th, Three Doors Down. And March 4th is gonna be Sean Paul. That's gonna be a good one. The last concert is on March 5th and it is Lauren Daigle, who's a New Orleans native. So there's your lineup for this year's Mardi Gras concerts. I do have to say, a little bit underwhelming and it's kind of strange that it doesn't run the entire length of Mardi Gras. So there's concerts for the first month and then no concerts for the second month, which is kind of interesting. There are a couple people I do want to see, but overall I think years past have had better lineups. So right across from the Transformers queue, if you start to head into the New York section, you will see this Madame Basile Psychic Readings window. It's right underneath the Bar Schuster window and next to Adrian's Pet Shop as you head towards Finnegan's. And if you look in this window, there's a little hint at what's to come. Of course, you can see the Psychic in there. And if you look at her table, she has all sorts of voodoo looking things and Mardi Gras type of things, some neon. And then right there, there's a sign for the Cursed Coconut Club. And I am very, very excited to see what they do with that. One thing that would be nice is if you can actually get into the Cursed Coconut Club, because during the Christmas season, we didn't even get a chance to go inside because every time we came, it was closed for either a private event or something else. So let's hope we can actually get in when they have the new one open up. So we just left Universal Studios. We're heading over to Islands of Adventure because it's been a little while since we've been over there and I do want to see 
where the new annual pass holder lounge is going to be. And I do want to try to get on a ride because now it's after four and I could use my express. And as we're going into Islands of Adventure, I forgot to mention that we did buy the Mardi Gras bottle. So we will be in the Mardi Gras tribute store once that opens. It was $85 with tax and you get to put two people on it. So Alex and I will be over in the tribute store in Hollywood. And here we are. We made it inside Islands of Adventure. I think we are going to hang a left instead of a right. And we're going to head towards Marvel Superhero Island and Toon Lagoon. So I think we're definitely going to get on the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. It's only a 20 minute wait, but of course it's after four and we do have Express. It's been a little while since we've done this one. So let's go ride Spider-Man. And we walked right on to Spider-Man. Here Hello. we go. This is Jonah Jameson, Roger, over. Is this thing on? Listen, Scoop, crime reports are coming in from all over the city and I'm starting to get worried. Did you see that? The spider signal. Was Spider-Man nearby? Trouble can't be far away. Keep Doc Ock on the loose. This could be the most dangerous night of my life. And yours. Be careful. Nice shades. <laughs> You're in for it. Yeah! <laughs> did all right. But don't give up your day job. Say cheese. See you later. Congratulations, you're a hero. I do it all the time. So our next and final stop here at Islands Adventure for the night brings us over to Toon Lagoon because this is going to be the future home of the annual pass holder lounge. So the new annual pass holder tribute store is going to be over here at Boop Oop A Doop. Try saying that 10 times fast over here in Toon Lagoon. The store is still open right now and they haven't announced when this is going to transform into the new AP lounge, but it will be opening sometime in early 2023. And just taking a look at the size of the store and the layout, this would actually be a really good location for an annual pass holder lounge because it's not too big, but it's big enough where you could put a few tables in here and have a little place to sit and recharge. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like once they redo it. So that is gonna do it for our day out here at Universal Orlando, both over at Studios and Islands of Adventure. So many things are changing. Like we said, Mardi Gras is right around the corner and I really, really can't wait for that. Also very curious to see what they do with the old Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone. Very excited to see what they announce once that announcement comes. And who knows, it probably won't be too far away because Universal does move very, very quick when it comes to construction. But if you guys enjoyed coming along with me today, make sure you give the video a nice big thumbs up. If you're new to our channel, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on all our future videos to come. And with that being said, we'll see you guys real soon.